As we've talked about in GIS, the conversion or movement from vector data to raster data isn't as simple as it seems. Raster data are much different in nature than vector data. Raster data is stored as cells. They contain values or one single attribute for an entire grid. While for vector data, we have the representative points, lines, and polygons. They're much less voluminous in nature, but they can contain multiple attributes. In addition, the processing techniques that we can do on raster data are much different than vector data. For example, for raster data, we can run local operations, zonal operations, global operations, map algebra, for example. For vector data, in addition to doing some of the buffers that we can do with raster data, we can do select by location, select by attributes. Now, what we're going to do in this exercise is go from vector data, and in this particular cases, these particular cases points, and create raster surfaces out of these. We're looking at an example here. These are swine lagoons across the state of North Carolina. They're just attributed as points, latitude, longitude. There's no swine lagoon size or density or anything attached to these. So we can just see where the actual locations of swine lagoons are located. I've got another example here. This is the maximum temperature <clears throat> for North Carolina taken from weather stations in August, I believe, of uh, 2021. And so you can see this station here in Chatham County is 90. Over here in Greensboro, it's 88. It's 90 in Burlington. It's 93 down south of Asheboro. But what if I wanted to know what the temperature was in Asheboro or over here in Vance or Person County? What would I need to do? I could get a good idea. It's probably going to be high 80s or low 90s. It's not going to be 82 or 83. It's not going to be 77 or 78 like it is in west, like it is in the mountains. But I have a pretty good guess as to what it is. And so what we're going to talk about are density calculations and interpolation routines. And they're both creating raster surfaces from point locations. In one case, we're creating these or interpolating these from existing quantitative attributes. In the other case, we're creating these surfaces just based on the locations of points. So interpolation is kind of takes it a, a little bit further than density. We're going to look at our first example first. Now look at the uh, swine example first. Now, in this particular example, we just want to create a density surface that highlights where all of the swine lagoons are located throughout the state. And as you can imagine, this raster surface is going to have, it's going to be fairly dense here in the eastern part of the state. And we've looked at these, uh, this data set in our geostatistics class, as well as our applied GIS class. So I'm just going to create a surface that highlights where the, the density of swine lagoons are. We could do these for crime locations or cancer deaths, so we can make these you know, proverbial heat maps to show where crime is high or deaths are high, instead of looking at these voluminous amounts of points, because we're looking at about 4,000, 5,000 points right here. So I'm going to go to Analysis and Tools. Typically, when we open these up, we have our favorite tools here, but I'm going to go to Toolboxes. Instead of working with our Spatial Statistics tools, I'm going to click on Spatial Analyst. So I will click on Spatial Analyst, and I have one tool here called Density. And I'm going to click on Point Density. You can see what it says here. It creates a magnitude per unit area from point features that fall within a neighborhood around a cell. In our geostatistics classes, we've talked about what a neighborhood is, what entails a neighborhood. When we're looking at when we're looking at the, the Geddes Ward, hot spots, cold spots, where we're storing data within enumeration units, such as county, zip code, census tracts. <clears throat> so here, when we look at the tools and the input parameters for this, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to see what entails a neighbor, uh, what entails a neighbor. And so when I run this, I've got my input features. They're going to be my Swine lagoons. My population field is going to be none because I, I just, I'm just looking at the density. This is going to be my output raster and my cell size and my neighborhood. Okay, and this is going to be the radius. 
And so I can highlight what these different neighborhoods are going to be. And these are in my map units here, which I believe I'm working in feet right here, state plane feet. Uh, and I know this is feet right here because I can see this curvature right here. And so I can change this up to, you know, 20,000 mile, uh, 20,000 feet, which is about four miles or so or whatever I want. I'm just going to keep these par input parameters. Next, under environments, my output coordinate system will be for the current map, which is my North Carolina state plane. My processing extent is going to be for NC counties. And so now you can see my state plane coordinates highlighted here. And I'm going to create a mask for NC counties. Now, you won't notice this as much here as we do for interpolation. But I want to set these so when I create this map and this raster, it's going to be limited just to the state of North Carolina. Now, that's good for a couple of reasons. First of all, if you don't set the processing extent, it's just going to be the bounding coordinates for your points. And so if I were to not set any input parameters here in my environments, it would make basically a rectangle about all the points here within my map, and also including South Carolina, for which I have no points. Second thing I wanted to do was set my mask. And so even though I, I set my bounding coordinates here, now it's just going to clip it. Now we don't use the word clip in, vector, in uh, raster GIS, we use that in vector GIS. And essentially clips it. So I'm just going to create a density map for all of North Carolina using these NC counties as my mask. And I'm going to run this. It might take a second to run. But you can see these input parameters. I'm going to X out. I'm going to go to my contents and let's see what it gives me. I'm going to X out of these and look what it gives me. So this is my swine density right here. Okay, So you can see where the points are high. So now if I were to check this, now I could see where these points are high and where these points are low. And so I've essentially created a surface. If I wanted to, I can change my masking or whatever here. So now I can see where these points are high. It essentially looks at a neighborhood and looks at the number of um, looks at the number of swine density, um, um, swine lagoons within a particular area and calculates a density. So you can see some of these islands out there. And then you can see the higher density here in Duplin and Sampson County, where they're especially high. In addition, I can change my parameters. And I'll do this really quickly again. Yeah, I'm going to go to my tools. I'm going to do my point density again. My input features will be swine lagoons. My output cell size, well, I can make this exactly. So I can change this instead of 1,000. If I want to make this better resolution or worse resolution, I can change it to 2,000. And maybe I can change my radius to, say, 25,000, so about 5 miles. And so once again, I can run this. It's going to be slightly different. My output cell size isn't quite as good. And then you notice I didn't set my environment. So look what I have here. This, this map's a, a little bit different than what we had before. Okay, Much, much different than we had before when I set a much bigger or much larger cell size. And so you can play with these numbers a little bit. Okay, But you can see some of the problems with, you know, with running these. So this is an example of density. But nonetheless, we've created a raster surface using these input parameters. And these are the default input parameters. And then I change these. And as you notice here, it has gone into South Carolina. And I didn't set the mask. And I didn't set the processing extent. So I really want to run this example to highlight the, uh, the need for the processing extent and setting the mask. And I set this parameter. So basically, I set it to be really, really high, this kind of search radius. And so it included a lot of points as well. Last example here I'm going to look at is the max temperature. Now, I don't care about the density of air monitoring. In this particular case, we're looking at temperature stations throughout the state. So I've got a 93, an 88, a 93. 
90 and 88 and 84. What I want to do is I want to create a surface for the entire area so I can figure it out what it is for this part of North Carolina over in uh, Randolph County here. So I don't particularly care about the density of these, even though the density is going to help and create better interpolation routines. So, you know, in these places where it's, you know, temperature heavy, it's going to be these areas right here, calculating these areas here is going to be a, probably a little bit better, a little bit more accurate because there's more stations around it versus these locations in Asheboro. So once again, I'm going to go to tools under the spatial analysis, uh, spatial analyst tools. I have interpolation. Now in class, we talked about a lot of different interpolation routines. We're just going to look at a couple here. One's called IDW, meaning when I want to find the value for a particular cell, it's going to be based, it's going to be weighted more on the values that are closer than are further away. And so I'm going to click on IDW. Me personally, this is my favorite. Now my input features are going to be my max temperature example. My field is going to be the amount. And my power is going to be two. I can set it to be one, but I'm just going to leave it as the default, meaning Areas or stations that are twice as close are going to have four times more of an effect, essentially, instead of it being a linear relationship. Now, once again, I'm going to set my environments. My output coordinate system is going to be my North Carolina State Plain, which I have for the map. My extent, processing extent, is going to be for all of NC counties. And my mask. This is going to be for NC County. So essentially what I'm going to do is make a map for this entire area here. Now, for my processing extent, you notice I captured some of these values outside of this. And so I can change the processing extent to be everything. I'll set it to be everything because now for this processing extent, I'm going to include all these values outside of North Carolina because this 92 or this 91 or this 84 may have an effect on these cells inside of it. So hopefully you notice what I did here that was different than swine lagoons because I only had swine lagoons for North Carolina. But in this particular case, I have temperature locations or temperature stations outside. And when I prepared my original data, I made sure to capture some of these outside. So I set my processing extent to be for all of, uh, for my uh, input feature class. The amount that I have is based on the, the temperature. And there's my mask. So now I'm going to run this. And it's going to create this surface. And I can act. So now you can see what was created. Here's a surface here. So instead of looking at all these points, now I've got a surface. And as I zoom in, you can see these are, you know, in the 70s. And I can break these up differently based on my symbology and changing my symbology. But as I zoom out a little bit more, I've created this surface here. We're going to look at one other interpolation routine, and we're going to do the same exact thing this time. And so I'm going to go to Analysis, Tools, Toolboxes. Instead of IDW, I'm going to run something called the Spline. My input features will be Max Temperature, Amount, NC counties. Processing extent will be my, you know, my points that I have, and my mask will be NC count. Uh, mask will be NC counties. So as you can see, after I run this spline, I have these results. You can see once again, I, I've, I've created a, a different map here with different values. So you can see, you know, the, the whites and the colors don't necessarily line up. But once again, we talk about the differences between 
creating interpolation and creating density maps. And hopefully we say, see, the, see the differences between these. We also find the differences with the parameters.